Hello children, welcome to today's class. Today our topic of discussion is related to colligative properties of solutions. Solutions they colligative gun, solvent they nishtrit matra which majood solute particles they ginti te nirbhar kar de han. E solute particles the chemical nature te nirbhar nahi kar de. A solute particles, molecules, jaan, ion ho sak de han. असि कोलिगेटिव प्रॉपर्टीज अते ओना दिया किस्मा बारे पढ़ चुके हां आओ एना नो एक बार फिर दोहरा लिए रिलेटिव लोअरिंग ऑफ द वेपर प्रेशर एलिवेशन ऑफ बॉइलिंग पॉइंट डिप्रेशन इन फ्रीजिंग पॉइंट ऑस्मोटिक प्रेशर असि रिलेटिव लोअरिंग ऑफ वेपर प्रेशर अते एलिवेशन ऑफ बॉइलिंग पॉइंट बारे पहला ही विचार कर चुके हां आज असि डिप्रेशन इन फ्रीजिंग पॉइंट एंड ऑस्मोटिक प्रेशर ते ध्यान केंद्रित करेंगे पर सब तो पहला आज दे पार्ट दे लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव्स ते नजर मार लिए आफ्टर कंप्लीशन ऑफ दिस टॉपिक लर्नर्स विल बी एबल टू डिफाइन फ्रीजिंग पॉइंट डिस्कस डिप्रेशन इन फ्रीजिंग पॉइंट डिटरमिन द मॉलिक्यूलर वेट from depression in freezing point recall the definition of osmosis and reverse osmosis discuss osmosis and its types derive van t hoff's equation for the solutions Before continuing our discussion on it, it is important to recall definition of freezing point. Freezing point. The freezing point of a substance may be defined as the temperature at which the vapor pressure of the substance in its liquid phase is equal to its vapor pressure in the solid phase. Depression in freezing point. In simple words, we can say. that the solid as well as the liquid form of the substance have same vapor pressure at the freezing point students it's time to recall what happens when a non volatile solute is dissolved in a solvent students when a non volatile solute is dissolved in a solvent the freezing point of the solvent get lowered This lowering of freezing point is known as depression in freezing point. Students, the colligative properties of solutions depend upon the number of moles of the solute dissolved in a definite amount of the solvent. It has been noticed that due to the lowering of vapor pressure, the solution would freeze at a lower temperature as compared to the temperature at which pure solvent freezes thus the decrease in the freezing point of a solvent caused by the addition of a non volatile solute is termed as a depression in freezing point let us try to understand it with the help of a graph shown on the screen aao taap ate vapor pressure darmiyan ek graph banaiye taapman matlab टेम्परेचर न एक्स एक्सिस उत्ते दर्शाया गया है जबकि वेपर प्रेशर न वाई एक्सिस उत्ते दर्शाया गया है असी एक एनिमेटेड ग्राफ न वेख रहे हाँ ए ग्राफ सोल्यूशन वन सोल्यूशन टू दे प्योर सोलवेंट लई तापमान के नाल वेपर प्रेशर विच तब्दीली दर्शाता है प्योर सोलवेंट लई वेपर प्रेशर कर्व न करव ए बी सी दर्शाया गया है सोल्यूशन वन लई वेपर प्रेशर कर्व न करव जी डी एफ न दर्शाया गया है सोल्यूशन टू लई वेपर प्रेशर कर्व न करव एच ई सी दर्शाया गया है करव जी डी एफ करव ए बी सी पॉइंट एफ ते मिलती है करव एच ई सी करव ए बी सी पॉइंट सी ते मिलती है 
ਹੁਣ ਇਹ ਮੰਨ ਲਿਓ ਕਿ ਸੋਲੂਸ਼ਨ 2 ਦੀ ਕਨਸੈਂਟਰੇਸ਼ਨ ਸੋਲੂਸ਼ਨ 1 ਦੀ ਕਨਸੈਂਟਰੇਸ਼ਨ ਦੇ ਮੁਕਾਬਲੇ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਹੈ ਅਸੀਂ ਹੋਰ ਕਨਸੈਂਟਰੇਟਿਡ ਸੋਲੂਸ਼ਨ ਕਿਵੇਂ ਪ੍ਰਾਪਤ ਕਰ ਸਕਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਜਦੋਂ ਸੋਲੂਸ਼ਨ 1 ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਹੋਰ ਨਾਨ ਵੋਲਟਾਈਲ ਸੋਲੂਟ ਮਿਲਾਇਆ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਤਾਂ ਹੋਰ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਕਨਸੈਂਟਰੇਸ਼ਨ ਵਾਲਾ ਸੋਲੂਸ਼ਨ 2 ਪ੍ਰਾਪਤ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਪੁਆਇੰਟ B ਤੇ ਦੋ ਫੇਜ਼ਸ ਮਿਲਦੇ ਹਨ ਲਿਕਵਿਡ ਸੋਲਵੈਂਟ ਦਾ ਵੇਪਰ ਪ੍ਰੈਸ਼ਰ ਫਰੋਜ਼ਨ ਸੋਲਵੈਂਟ ਦੇ ਵੇਪਰ ਪ੍ਰੈਸ਼ਰ ਦੇ ਬਰਾਬਰ ਹੋ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਜੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਇਸ ਪੁਆਇੰਟ ਤੋਂ ਥੋੜਾ ਮੂਵ ਕਰੀਏ ਤਾਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਲਿਕਵਿਡ ਸੋਲਵੈਂਟ ਸਟੇਜ ਜਾਂ ਫਰੋਜ਼ਨ ਸੋਲਵੈਂਟ ਸਟੇਜ ਪ੍ਰਾਪਤ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਪੁਆਇੰਟ B ਪਿਓਰ ਸੋਲਵੈਂਟ ਦੇ ਫ੍ਰੀਜ਼ਿੰਗ ਪੁਆਇੰਟ ਨੂੰ ਦਰਸਾਉਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਫ੍ਰੀਜ਼ਿੰਗ ਪ੍ਰੋਸੈਸ ਦੌਰਾਨ ਕੀ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਜਦੋਂ ਸੋਲੂਸ਼ਨ ਫ੍ਰੀਜ਼ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਤਾਂ ਸੋਲਿਡ ਜੋ ਕਿ ਸੈਪਰੇਟ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਹਨ ਅਕਸਰ ਪਿਓਰ ਸੋਲਿਡ ਸੋਲਵੈਂਟ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਹਨ ਇਸ ਦਾ ਕੋਰਿਸਪੌਂਡਿੰਗ ਟੈਂਪਰੇਚਰ ਟੀ ਐਫ ਹੈ ਜਦੋਂ ਸੋਲੂਸ਼ਨ ਦਾ ਵੇਪਰ ਪ੍ਰੈਸ਼ਰ ਕੱਟ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਤਾਂ ਇਹ ਫਰੋਜ਼ਨ ਸੋਲਵੈਂਟ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਸਿਰਫ ਉਦੋਂ ਹੀ ਇਕਵਿਲੀਬ੍ਰੀਅਮ ਵਿੱਚ ਰਹਿ ਸਕਦਾ ਹੈ ਜਦੋਂ ਫਰੋਜ਼ਨ ਸੋਲਵੈਂਟ ਦਾ ਵੇਪਰ ਪ੍ਰੈਸ਼ਰ ਵੀ ਘੱਟ ਹੋਵੇ ਇਹ ਘੱਟ ਟੈਂਪਰੇਚਰ ਤੋਂ ਹੀ ਹੋਵੇਗਾ ਇਸ ਚਾਰਟ ਵਿੱਚ ਅਸੀਂ ਵੇਖ ਰਹੇ ਹਾਂ ਕਿ ਸੋਲੂਸ਼ਨ 1 ਅਤੇ ਸੋਲੂਸ਼ਨ 2 ਦੀ ਵੇਪਰ ਪ੍ਰੈਸ਼ਰ ਕਰਵ ਲਿਕਵਿਡ ਸੋਲਵੈਂਟ ਤੋਂ ਘੱਟ ਹੈ ਇਹ ਸਿੱਧ ਕਰਦਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਸੋਲੂਸ਼ਨ ਇੱਕ ਘੱਟ ਤਾਪਮਾਨ ਦੇ ਫ੍ਰੀਜ਼ ਹੋਏਗਾ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਕਿ ਪਿਓਰ ਸੋਲਵੈਂਟ ਫ੍ਰੀਜ਼ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਸੋਲੂਸ਼ਨ 1 ਪੁਆਇੰਟ F ਤੇ ਫ੍ਰੀਜ਼ ਹੋਏਗਾ ਇਸ ਨੂੰ ਵੀ ਇੱਥੇ ਦਿਖਾਇਆ ਗਿਆ ਹੈ ਇਸ ਦਾ ਕੋਰਿਸਪੌਂਡਿੰਗ ਟੈਂਪਰੇਚਰ T1 ਹੈ ਸੋਲੂਸ਼ਨ 2 ਪੁਆਇੰਟ C ਤੇ ਫ੍ਰੀਜ਼ ਹੋਏਗਾ ਇਸ ਨੂੰ ਵੀ ਇੱਥੇ ਦਿਖਾਇਆ ਗਿਆ ਹੈ ਇਸ ਦਾ ਕੋਰਿਸਪੌਂਡਿੰਗ ਟੈਂਪਰੇਚਰ T2 ਹੈ Obviously it is clear from the graph that the value of temperature T1 is less than Tf and value of T2 is less than T1 We can also find value of delta Tf For solution 1 value of delta Tf is equal to Tf minus T1 This will be depression in freezing point for solution 1. Students, what will be the value of delta Tf for solution 2? For solution 2, value of delta Tf is equal to Tf minus T2. This will be depression in freezing point for solution 2. Let us assume that there are two dilute solutions FD and CE are approximately parallel straight lines and BC is also a straight line since there are two triangles BDF and BEC these two are similar that's why we can write DF upon EC is equal to BD upon BE on placing their values we get Tf minus T1 upon Tf minus T2 is equal to P0 minus P1 upon P0 minus P2 where P1 and P2 are the vapor pressure of the solution 1 and solution 2 respectively hence we can write depression in freezing point is directly proportional to the lowering of vapor pressure or mathematically we can write delta t is proportional to p0 minus ps where delta t represents the depression in freezing point and p0 minus ps represents the lowering of vapor pressure let us try to determine molecular weight from the depression in freezing point since p0 is constant for the same solvent at a fixed temperature 
we can write as delta t is proportional to p naught minus p s upon p naught where delta t represents the depression in freezing point p naught represents the vapor pressure of the pure solvent p s represents the vapor pressure of the solution having non volatile solute p naught minus p s represents the lowering of vapor pressure p naught minus p s upon p naught represents the relative lowering of vapor pressure according to raoult's law for the dilute solutions we know p naught minus p s divided by p naught is equal to mass of solute wb multiplied by gram molecular mass of solvent ma upon mass of solvent wa multiplied by gram molecular mass of solute mb in the shown equation p naught minus p s upon p naught represents the relative lowering of vapor pressure mb represents the gram molecular mass of the solute capital m a represents the molecular mass of the solvent w b represents the mass of the solute w a represents the mass of the solvent let us assume value of m is constant here we get p not minus p s upon p not is equal to mass of solute w b divided by mass of solvent w a multiplied by gram molecular mass of solute mb from equation 2 and 4 we get delta t is proportional to wb upon wa multiplied by mb we know that molality is equal to wb multiplied by 1000 divided by mb multiplied by wa or m divided by 1000 is equal to wb divided by mb multiplied by wa now substituting these values in the equation delta t is proportional to wb divided by wa multiplied by mb we get delta t is proportional to m divided by 1000 or delta t is equal proportionality constant multiplied by m divided by 1000 or in other words delta t is equal to molar depression constant kf multiplied by m where mb represents the gram molecular mass of the solute kf represents the molar depression constant wb represents the mass of the solute delta t represents the depression in freezing point wa represents the mass of the solvent m represents the molality of the solution where kf is a constant value this constant value is related to the calculation of freezing point that is why it is known as freezing point constant or cryoscopic constant or molar depression constant If we assume value of W A upon M B is equal to unity, and W A of solvent is equal to one kg or one thousand grams, the molarity of the solution becomes one. Then value of K F becomes equal to delta T. Thus, on the basis of this formula, we can define molar depression constant very easily. Molar depression constant may be defined as the freezing point depression constant produced when one mole of solute is dissolved in one kilogram or one thousand grams of solvent. Let us assume if the mass of the solvent is given in grams, it has to be converted into kilograms. Thus, the equation five changes as shown on the screen. delta t is equal to kf multiplied by wb upon mb multiplied by 1 divided by wa upon 1000 delta t is equal to kf multiplied by wb upon mb 
multiplied by 1000 upon W A. We can also write values of M B which is equal to 1000 multiplied by K F multiplied by W B is divided by delta T multiplied by W A where M B represents the gram molecular mass of the solute, K F represents the molar depression constant, W B represents the mass of the solute, delta T represents the depression in freezing point, W A represents the mass of the solvent. We can calculate the mass of the solute with the help of shown equation on the screen. The value of K F. Let us have a look at the formula used to calculate value of Kf. Kf is equal to R multiplied by Tf square divided by 1000 multiplied by Lf where Tf represents the freezing point of the solvent in Kelvin. Lf represents the molar latent heat of fusion. R is the gas constant, Kf represents the molar depression constant, its units are Kelvin per kilogram. Uses of depression in freezing point. Students, it is time to discuss the uses of depression in freezing point. Common salt and calcium chloride are sprinkled over the roads to clear the snow in the cold countries. Ethylene glycol is used as antifreeze in car radiators to prevent the water in the radiators from freezing during extreme winters. Osmotic pressure. Let us discuss one more colligative property, osmotic pressure. Before starting our discussion on it, it is important to know about semi-permeable membranes. Semi-permeable membrane is that membrane which allows the passage of only solvent molecules and not of solute particles. Such type of membrane remains present in vegetables as well as in animals. Students, let us perform an experiment to show what happens when a semi-permeable membrane is placed between a solution and a pure solvent. A solution has been kept in a vessel having semi-permeable membrane at the bottom. It is placed in the pure solvent. It is observed that the solvent molecules flow from a region of pure solvent into a solution. As a result, an increase in the height of solution level is seen here. Let us try to define osmosis and osmotic pressure. The word osmosis is derived from a Greek word osmos which means to push. The spontaneous flow of the solvent molecules through a semi-permeable membrane from a pure solvent to a solution or from a dilute solution to a concentrated solution is called as osmosis. Osmotic pressure may be defined as the excess pressure that must be applied to the solution or concentrated solution to prevent osmosis. Let us take an aqueous sugar solution in the porous pot. It is having a semi-permeable membrane of cupric ferrocyanide and is also attached with a long glass tube. This porous pot is immersed in the distilled water. Let us look at the micro level. Thus, osmosis takes place from water to the aqueous sugar solution through the semi-permeable membrane. As a result, the solution level in the long glass tube rises over a period of time. After a few days, the level attains a definite maximum value. This marks the stage when the hydrostatic pressure sets up due to the column of sugar solution, counterbalances the flow of pure water 
into the solution. The hydrostatic pressure build up on the solution which just stops the osmosis of the pure solvent in the solution through a semi permeable membrane is called osmotic pressure. Osmotic pressure de adar te solutions tin kisma de hunde han. Let us study these one by one. What are hypertonic solutions? Hypertonic solutions contain a high concentration of solute relative to another solution. One example of hypertonic solutions is red blood corpuscle placed in 5% sodium chloride solution. What happens when a red blood corpuscle is placed in a hypertonic solution that is 5% sodium chloride solution? In this case, water comes out of the cell and the cell shrinks. Now, let us see this effect with the help of animation. It is seen when a cell is placed in a hypertonic solution, the water diffuses out of the cell, causing the cell to shrivel. What are hypertonic solutions? Hypotonic solutions contain a low concentration of solute relative to another solution. One example of hypotonic solutions is red blood corpuscles placed in the distilled water. What happens when a red blood corpuscle is placed in a hypotonic solution? In this case, Water flows into the cell and the cell swells or bursts. Let us see this effect with the help of shown animation. When a cell is placed in a hypotonic solution, the water diffuses into the cell, causing the cell to swell and possibly explode. Isotonic solutions. What are isotonic solutions? Isotonic solutions contain the same concentration of solute as another solution. Let us take an example of it. Its example is red blood corpuscles placed in 0.16 molar sodium chloride solution. In this case, blood cells neither swell nor shrink as no osmosis takes place. Let us see with the help of shown animation here. When a cell is placed in an isotonic solution, the water diffuses into and out of the cell at the same rate. The fluid that surrounds the body cells is isotonic. Reverse Osmosis The osmosis taking place from solution to pure water by applying pressure greater than osmotic pressure on the solution is termed as reverse osmosis. How can we reverse the direction of osmosis? It is possible. If a pressure larger than the osmotic pressure is applied to the solution side. Let us look at the shown animation on the screen. Fresh water is separated by pure solution with the help of a semi permeable membrane. When pressure is applied on the salt solution, the pure solvent flows out of the solution through the semi permeable membrane. This phenomenon is called reverse osmosis. Wenthoff's equation for solutions. Students, let us derive Wenthoff's equation for solutions. Osmotic pressure of the solution 
is inversely proportional to the volume containing one mole of the solute. Mathematically, it can be written as pi is proportional to 1 upon V. Osmotic pressure of the solution is directly proportional to the temperature. Mathematically, it can be written as pi is proportional to T. From equation 1 and 2, we get pi is proportional to T upon V. It can also be written as pi V is proportional to T. Pi multiplied by V is equal to R dash multiplied by T where R dash is a constant value. This equation is derived when one mole of solute is dissolved in V liters. Let us assume that n moles of solutes are dissolved in V liters of solution. This equation becomes as pi multiplied by V is equal to n multiplied by R multiplied by T. This equation is known as the Van Hoff's equation for solutions. Students, as we know, osmotic pressure is proportional to the molarity C of the solution at a given temperature. Thus, pi is equal to C multiplied by R multiplied by T. Here pi is the osmotic pressure and R is the gas constant. Pi is equal to N2 upon V multiplied by R multiplied by T. Here V represents the volume of a solution in liters containing N2 moles of solute. If W2 grams of the solutes having molar mass M2 are present in the solution, then pi multiplied by V is equal to W2 multiplied by R multiplied by T upon M2 or M2 is equal to W2 multiplied by R multiplied by T upon pi multiplied by V. Thus, knowing these quantities, we can calculate the molar mass of the solute. Numerical. The solution of urea in water has a boiling point of 100.128 degree Celsius. Calculate the freezing point of the same solution. Molal constants of water Kf and Kb are 1.86 degree Celsius and 0.512 degree Celsius respectively. Solution. Step 1. To calculate molality of the solution from boiling point data. Given delta Tb is equal to 100.128 minus 100 is equal to 0 0.128 degree Celsius. Kb is equal to 0 0.512 degree Celsius. Using the formula Delta Tb is equal to Kb multiplied by M, where M is the molality we get. M is equal to Delta Tb upon Kb is equal to 0 0.128 upon 0 0.512, which is equal to 0 0.25. Step 2. To calculate the depression in freezing point. Given Kf is equal to 1.86 degree Celsius and M is equal to 0 0.25. Delta Tf is equal to Kf multiplied by M which is equal to 1.86 multiplied by 0 0.25 which is equal to 0 0.465 degree Celsius. So, the freezing point of the solution Tf is equal to Tf0 minus by delta Tf. On placing values of Tf0 minus delta Tf, we get 0 degree Celsius minus 0.465 degree Celsius, which is equal to minus 0 
465 degree Celsius. Numerical problem. 200 centimeter cube of an aqueous solution of a protein contains 1.26 grams of the protein. The osmotic pressure of such a solution at 300 Kelvin is found to be 2.57 multiplied by 10 raised to the power minus 3 bar. Calculate the molar mass of the protein. Solution pi multiplied by V is equal to W2 multiplied by R multiplied by T upon M2 multiplied by V. Symbol pi represent osmotic pressure or M2 which we will calculate is equal to W2 multiplied by R multiplied by T upon pi multiplied by V. Pi is equal to 2.57 multiplied by 10 raised to the power minus 3 bar. V is equal to 200 centimeter cube which is equal to 0 0.200 liter. T is equal to 300 Kelvin. R is equal to 0 0.083 liter bar per mole per Kelvin. Substituting these values in above equation we get M2 is equal to 1.26 grams multiplied by 0 0.083 liter bar per Kelvin per mole multiplied by 300 Kelvin upon 2.57 multiplied by 10 raised to the power minus 3 bar multiplied by 0 0.200 liter which is equal to 61.022 grams per mole. Questionnaire. Students, it is time to check your knowledge. Let us try to know what we have learnt today. Write Wenthoff's equation for dilute solutions. Answer. Pi multiplied by V is equal to N multiplied by R multiplied by T. Here pi represents the osmotic pressure and R is the gas constant. The next question is, what happens when RBC are placed in 0.1% sodium chloride solution? And the solution is, as 0.1% sodium chloride solution is hypotonic to RBCs, therefore, when RBCs are placed in them, water flows into the cells and they swell or burst. Students, I hope that you have enjoyed today's lesson. See you next time. Thank you.